those giant bright white rectangles, they're a lot. I've talked about trim colors in pretty much every single paint color review that I've done, but I realized something. I haven't really taken the time to explain my process when picking the perfect trim color. That's what this video is for. You know the drill, hit the like button and let's talk about my tips to pick a solid interior white trim color. So when we're talking about trim or woodwork, we're referring to the molding or millwork that frames the floors in the form of your baseboards, the ceilings in the forms of your crown molding, and any openings in your walls, doors, and windows in the forms of frames and casings. So in a standard color scheme, your molding and millwork will usually be painted with a different color from the walls, or at the very least, utilize a different paint type. Now we're going to get to all the color talk in a little bit, but to start things off, let's get an important thing right out of the way first, the finish. Not all paint products are created equal. You'll have different companies that provide different options for you, but you also have different product lines within those companies, and just to take things one step further, individual products come in different finishes or sheens. And sheens and finishes can range all the way from the flattest of flat paints to your ultra high gloss products. While I will encourage you to read the label or ask an expert if you're not familiar with a specific product, you can usually count on a higher sheen paint to be more washable and more durable than their lower sheen alternatives. There's a reason why you might have noticed your baseboards and doors looking a bit shinier than your walls, and that's because more often than not, you'll see trim being painted in at the very least, a pearl or a satin finish, but more commonly, a semi-gloss finish. You're going to want that added durability on those surfaces specifically because your baseboards are close to the floor, which means they're likely to get dirty, maybe kicked around a little bit by some unruly guests. So you'll probably be wiping them down more often than your dining room walls, unless those same unruly guests are like throwing wine glasses around. <laughs> the same goes for window frames and window sills. They tend to attract dust and really require extra washability. And of course you have doors, which will get handled on a regular basis. And even if you think your hands are clean, the only real way to find out is to take a really close look around your door handles after a year of use or so. So yes, I would strongly recommend picking a finish above eggshell in shininess for all of those pieces of trim that are at ground level where they're likely going to come into contact with stuff. The crown molding up top is the one piece of trim that is hotly debated as to whether to paint it shinier or flat. I think this is more of a personal preference thing to be honest, but it just depends on the look you're trying to achieve. If you want your crown molding to feel more like a part of the woodwork and continue that cohesion, then you can match up your finishes there. But if you wanted your molding to feel more like a seamless part of your ceiling, then you'd want to match it up with the finish that's already up there, which is likely going to be flat or maybe matte. What it comes down to is your crown molding isn't going to need any extra durability that higher sheen paints provide. So it's purely an aesthetic decision at that point. If you have some really interesting, intricate crown molding that you want to accentuate, then a semi-gloss or even a high gloss finish will do that. But if you can't be bothered either way, it'll just be easier to continue your ceiling paint onto that molding as well. All right, so that's it for the finish. Lots of information, but picking the wrong finish will really be a major blunder, especially when it comes to your woodwork because it's going to continue throughout your home in a lot of cases. So that's gonna be a lot of repainting. So once you have an idea of what sheen you wanna go with, what about color? In this video, I'm mainly going to discuss white or off-white trim colors, as they tend to be more common than darker ones, but definitely let me know in the comment section below if you wanna learn more about dark trim colors and how I go about strategizing for that. If you're inexperienced with color selection, it may be a good idea to start small and just go for one singular trim color for your whole project. What you really wanna do is scope out where the trim will actually be going. Are you picking a trim color for your house, a floor, or a single room? Unless I feel compelled to, I tend to default to one single trim color that will continue throughout the entire home. And then when I feel compelled to change things up for creative purposes, I'll do that. Less is more with trim colors because if you just stick with one and allow the rest of your design to shine, it'll just help keep things a little more streamlined. This doesn't always need to be the case, 
Sometimes you wanna try something a little bit different in certain spaces, but normally, Anything that is visible within a certain space, I just try to keep it simple, especially in those more open concept environments. You don't wanna break things up by all of a sudden switching from light to dark baseboards from one side of the room to the other. If it's a room where the doors can close and it's pretty much in its own separate enclosed space, then it's not as big of a deal. And again, I wanna reiterate, this is just my preference. I'm not quoting an excerpt from the interior design manifesto or anything, but especially if you're fairly new to picking colors, just start with one for your home. A side benefit of this is it can sometimes make your decision even easier because you likely already have some trim that's painted in other portions of your house. So you can just sort of copy paste what's already there. But what if you're starting fresh or you want to change up the trim color that's already there? Well, then you have to start considering the other design elements in the area. Start to examine the decor you have or planning to have after your project has been completed. This starts with your flooring, it continues with your furniture and your accessories, and it ends with your wall colors because that's likely the order of uh, permanence, I guess you could say. You're much less likely to change your flooring than you are your wall colors. If you have noticed that you love the more contemporary, cooler colors in grays, blues, and teals, then you could be better off going with an off-white paint color like ultra white or distant gray. These are white paint colors that have a slight cool undertone, which will remain bright and fresh in those color schemes. On the flip side, if you gravitate more towards warmer colors like oranges, reds, browns, beiges, creams, I feel like there's more options with warm colors. Then you're going to want to go with a trim color that is at least a bit warmer leaning. This includes Benjamin Moore's Cloud White, Simply White, or even Oxford white to a lesser extent. It's sometimes fun to get a little fancy with your color selection and start playing with opposites and complementary colors in the forms of your wall and accent colors, but you hardly ever wanna do that purposefully with your wall and your trim colors. The path of least resistance is match up the color temperature, either warm and warm or cool and cool. Again, not a hard and fast rule, but it's just easier to implement. But if matching up all those colors is too tall of an order, then I have another tip for you. If you're in the dark, just go stark. And I don't mean literally a dark room, but if you have no idea, there's no harm in ignoring the undertones in your trim and just pick something that's a clean, bright white instead. I would suggest an off-white like super white because it's as bright as you wanna go without going overboard and it'll mesh well with pretty much any surrounding wall color. I'll also give an honorary mention to Chantilly Lace by Benjamin Moore, which is their most stark white that you can get, but it's just a tad more vibrant than I like on baseboards and especially those larger surfaces like doors. Those giant bright white rectangles, they're a lot. But you know, if that's your thing, why not? <laughs> if you've watched our videos before, you might have heard me talk about my 10 LRV rule when it comes to trim color. And this is kind of my most important point here. The LRV is a color's light reflectance value. Every single paint color has one, and it's a number between zero and 100 that conveys the percentage of light that a color reflects. Your whitest white paints are going to be close to 100, and your deepest blacks are going to be close to zero. The reason I mention this is because I like to take into account a color's LRV when I'm selecting it as a trim color. If you wanna see some visual difference between, let's say, the walls and the trim, I like to have an LRV difference of at least 10 between the two. This will give you some visual contrast, which is more than likely going to be there for a lot of paint colors, but if you're going with an off-white on the walls, you may at least wanna consider picking a much brighter white on the trim. For example, if I wanted classic gray on the walls and simply white on the trim, that would be fine because it's more than a 10 point difference. If I then decided I wanted to go with Swiss coffee on the walls, then maybe I'd be better off bumping it up to Chantilly Lace to get a bigger buffer between the two. This is just a handy little technique that I've sort of put together over the years, and it's really helped me quite a bit. If you ever want to find out the LRV of a particular color, you just gotta go on the website of the paint company you're using, look at the color, and then there should be a detail section, or sometimes it's right on the front page, you can find it and then use that information to your benefit. This is a trim color that I love to use, so hope you enjoy it.